How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video or rather I've actually uploaded this video previously but because I made one single factual error I'm going to just re-upload it and besides I think I have a lot more to say about this character so let's get back into it. If you do not yet know there is going to be three new espers and we now know who the first esper is going to be and that is Kaylee. She is a four star flow runner disabler and while I honestly feel that her kit is pretty good there is still a need to take note of what her leader buff is going to be if she even has a leader buff in the first place. So for this video, I'm going to share everything I know about this Esper and where I assume she's going to be good at and whether or not you should pull for her. Here's her S1 Satin Strike. Deals damage to one enemy and extends crit rate buff on yourself if a crit was triggered. And here's her S2 Crisscross. Attacks an enemy three times dealing damage based on Kaylee's attack with a chance of reducing a target's AP. And on her third ascension, you also inflict an additional speed debuff if a critical was triggered. And finally, for her S3, we have Dance of Deluge. Grants a critical buff to yourself and you attack all enemies three times, dealing damage based on Kaylee's attack with a chance of inflicting freeze if a crit is triggered. So obviously, her kit is very tailored around crit rate and I would go as far as to say that if she doesn't have a 100% crit rate, she's not going to be effective. Which means that if you do get her when you're a complete newbie, she's going to be a little bit more difficult to make use of. But with that said, she's still going to be very newbie friendly because she grants herself a critical rate buff, which makes it so much easier to attain a 100% crit rate. She also spots a lot of handy debuffs, especially for the Temporal Tower. So for example, on her skill 2, she has AP reduction and speed debuff. And on her skill 3, she has a team-wide freeze. And not only that, her kit is tailored towards DPS as well. So I think for new players, she's going to be very all-encompassing. You're going to have a lot of debuffs. And she's also going to be probably one of your main DPS, especially in the Ritual Miracles. Now with that said, let's take a look at where I think she's going to excel in. And we are going to start off with Kronos. Kronos is arguably the easiest of the three Ritual Miracle bosses right now because he is super straightforward. As long as you're able to sustain yourself well enough, or control the boss enough, you're going to handle this Ritual Miracle very easily. So not only is she potentially really good with her wave clearing on her skill 3, she can also consistently land a lot of single target hits on the boss. And of course, let's not forget that she's a flow runner and the Kronos is an Infernus, so she already has a lot of natural advantages. And the second place that I think she's going to excel in is going to be the Fafnir boss because she has two different skills with multiple attacks, so she can effectively melt down the shield that the boss has, although it is rather unfortunate that her skill 1 does not come with multi-hits, which means that she's probably not very good with Sword Avatara. But in the same vein, I would still say that she's not the best pick for Fafnir, especially since there are many free-to-play options, such as net 3 units. And thirdly, I think she's going to excel pretty okay in real-time arena. And this shouldn't come as a surprise, because in real-time arena, everyone is manually playing the game, which means that it wouldn't be a surprise if some players run with two or more disablers. Now this is entirely my assumption, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to see a lot of long mians with Kaylee's running around. This is going to be a rather cheap way to really melt down your opponent's mentality. So definitely don't sleep on her for real time arena, she's going to be pretty good over there. And I think fourth and probably the least as well, Temporal Tower. Now the reason why I say that she's not going to be so effective on Temporal Tower is because Temporal Tower tends to have a lot of immunity units and a lot of debuff cleansers. So you will notice that most of the main flaws have like Catherine, Jin Yu Yao, and Heng Yue as well. So if your strategy is debuffs and poisons, you're not going to have a very good time in the Temporal Tower. So that's why I feel like she's not going to perform that well over there. But with the basics out of the way, I want to explore a little bit more. I want to go a little bit more detailed. So I want to start off with the red flag over here. It's not really a red flag, but it's something that we all need to take note of when she's finally released. We need to know what her leader buff is and whether she even have a leader buff in the first place. Now if she comes with a speed lead, no matter is it for rituals or is it for PvP, she is instantly going to be pretty high in the tier list. But I think it's most likely the case that she's not going to come with a speed lead. If not, then there will be 4 control units with speed leads, which is in my opinion a little bit too much. So what I suspect that she has is a crit rate leader buff. If that is the case, crit rate leader buff is actually one of the most subpar leader buffs in the game. Because for all the characters that you build, you should never ever rely on having a leader buff for your unit to even function in the first place. So if she doesn't get a speed lead, I'm not too excited about her. However, even if she doesn't have a speed lead, there is still one redeeming quality that she may have and that is to have a very high base speed. Now, as long as she's able to have 106 minimum base speed plus an additional 10 from let's say Ascension, then she could actually be very useful as well in point war. Cause right now everyone has a Gabriel and Gabriel is the best initiator in the game hands down. She starts off with uh, the highest base speed in the game 
plus she drops an immunity and a defense buff on your entire team. So in order to compete with the likes of Gabriel, you will need someone who is slightly faster and if you are going to go neck and neck with relic quality, then it is super important that your base speed has to be on par or better. So if she has at least the same speed as Gabriel's and Una's out there, then I think it's not a bad idea to have like a speed lead like Long Mian followed up with a Kaylee as well and Kaylee will ensure that things get frozen. But this is a huge if. But of course you can argue that hey you know what I don't need to be super fast because I have a Raven and you're not wrong because Raven is an absolute beast and a massive counter to Gabriel teams so if you do have a Raven sure but then the question I'm going to pose to you is why don't you just use Jean? You know why do you want to use your precious ability mons on this unit when you can use simple rare ability mons on Jean and Jean even comes with a dispel and Jean is a 3 star unit! So to round off this video, if she doesn't have a speed lead or she's not super fast, I am honestly not excited about her. Feel free to disagree down in the comments below. Of course, I'm not saying that she's entirely useless, okay? She is definitely usable, but comparing her to the other existing units around and even some of the free units like net 3 units, I feel like there is a lot more to be desired in her kit, or rather she's just not that special down the road. But I could be completely wrong because I have not even tested her out myself. And of course, we still do not know stuff like proc rate. She could have massive proc rates. So yeah, anyway, let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my opinions on this Esper. So that's the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. This has been free to play, by the way. And as always, I will see you in the next video.